Hello everyone, I'm Anuj Nakade and you're watching Live Law. In this video, we bring you news of a bail hearing in a very important case. This Monday, on the 8th of May, the Supreme Court dismissed the challenge to the bail of the former Mumbai Police Commissioner, Sajjai Pandey, in the illegal phone tapping case. But before we tell you what happened in the hearing, let us understand the background of the case. The story starts with ISEC Services Private Limited, a company that provides consultancy services for cyber and information security. They entered into a contract with the National Stock Exchange or the NSE for analyzing data and creating cyber protection for them. The National Stock Exchange is the place for trading of shares and options and other investments in all the companies that are doing business in India and are inviting or attracting investors. This would mean that the ISEC was in charge of the cyber security of some of the most important financial data in the country in some ways. Now, the allegations are that the NSE asked ISEC to analyze pre-recorded calls of their employees in 2009. The purpose of this analysis being requested was to identify and isolate suspicious calls on the issue of information security. It is worth noting that it is illegal to listen to or record phone calls of people without their consent and any such monitoring can only be done after taking permission from the competent authorities. So the CBI made an FIR against ISEC services alleging that they were monitoring and analyzing the calls of their employees illegally. Because they had not taken the necessary permissions to monitor these calls, nor did they have the consent of the people whose calls were recorded. The FIR was registered against the ISEC services for abetment of crime, criminal breach of trust as a merchant or public servant, and fraud under the Indian Penal Code. There were other allegations as well for breach of confidentiality and documenting information without correct authorization under the Information Technology Act and other provisions of the India Telegraph Act and the Wireless Telegraphy Act. For his alleged role in the crime, there were allegations against the former Mumbai Police Commissioner of Criminal Misconduct under the Prevention of Corruption Act, along with violations of laws under the Indian Penal Code, the Indian Telegraph Act and the Information Technology Act as we just discussed. After that, the Enforcement Directorate filed its Enforcement Commission Information Report or the ECIR where it was alleged that a revenue of 4.54 crores was earned by ISEC services for its illegal phone tapping. This revenue is considered proceeds of crime or money earned from performing a crime and hence is punishable under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The accused was arrested for his role in the illegal phone tapping by the Enforcement Directorate in the July of 2022. He then applied for bail in a special court in Delhi in the August of that year. The special court denied him bail. Then he applied for bail in the Delhi High Court. The High Court has noted that prima facie, that is on the face of it, the actions of the NSE and the ISEC services are violative of the Indian Telegraph Act. But the offences under the Telegraph Act are not scheduled offences under the PMLA. Scheduled offences in short are a list of crimes for which proceeds of crime can be punished under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The High Court said that for the purposes of bail, they only had to look at the scheduled offences under the PMLA that were mentioned in the FIR and nothing else. It was then noted that none of the offences under the Indian Penal Code were made out against the accused. There was also no allegation in the case of receiving or being given bribes or illegally receiving any gratification in the prosecution's case. Since the allegations of none of the scheduled offences are being made out against the accused, the High Court granted bail to the former commissioner in December of 2022. The court, however, noted that illegal phone tapping and listening to phone conversations without the consent of all parties or without needed authorization is a violation of the right to privacy under the fundamental right to life given in Article 21 of the Constitution. The Enforcement Directorate then approached the Supreme Court to challenge the bail granted to the accused by the Delhi High Court. A two-judge bench of Justice S.K. Kaul and Justice Asanuddin Amanullah heard the matter. Additional Solicitor General S.V. Raju appeared for the Enforcement Directorate and told the court that the Delhi High Court has conducted a mini-trial in the bail hearing. Even Justice S.K. Kaul remarked on the trend that bail hearings are being argued at length on merits by the parties, which is not the norm for bail hearings. However, 
the court was not inclined to cancel the bail granted to the former commissioner. The court indicated that the reason for this is that the accused has been out of jail for six months in this matter already and there appears to be no reason to interfere with the order of the Delhi High Court. At the request of the additional Solicitor General, the court has said in its order that the Delhi High Court bail order would not have any bearing on the trial conducted in this case. In a world where we depend on information and communication technology in all aspects of life, privacy is a major concern. This case brings forth the exact fears one could have regarding the breach of privacy for maintaining security. If you would like for us to cover a detailed video about the right to privacy under the Indian Constitution, please let us know in the comments. If you found the video informative, please leave a like and tell us in the comments how we can shape our content to bring you your legal news in more engaging ways. We will also leave a link to the full report in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you.